Okay, we're going to start right here. Many of us uh, grew up in these schools. We asked a lot of questions. Uh, we heard a lot of uh, answers. Um, one of the things that we were specifically taught is that elephants are from Africa. And if you want an elephant, you have to ship them in from Africa. Okay, so... Either someone is in history is shipping elephants to North America or North America had its own elephants everywhere. Um, ancient Americans hunt bizarre elephant um, Elephant ancestors bones alter American Amer North America's history. Okay, so they found large mammoths. They even found mastodons. All right, so if you do not know what a mastodon is, we just copy that. We go over here to Google. We hit the paste button. Oh, look, mastodons in North America. Okay, so that is an image of a mastodon. All right, so when you say uh, Willy Mammoth, right? All right, another name for a Willy Mammoth is a mastodon. Woolly, excuse me, woolly, like wool comes from them. Woolly like a woolly bear. All right, so again, you are being taught elephants come from one location on the earth. Like there is a, a fountain, a tap that just pours out elephants and it's in Africa. Yet, all these ancient bones are found all over North America as if they already had a home here. There's more bones found in North America than you can say, oh, just a few were brought over and we have the bone. There's too many bones. There's too many bones just to say a few were gift wrapped and dropped off. We were taught that horses did not exist in North America. I make statements all the time. You have ancient people being buried with their horse beneath their ass, just like they rode them. They rode on their backs. They were buried on the back of that horse. When I say ancient, I'm not talking 200 years. In 1493, on Columbus's second voyage to the Americas, Spanish horses were brought to North America. That's what was brought to North America, not the horse itself, not all horses being brought to North America, just the Spanish horse. The f first in the Virgin Islands, and in 1519, they were reintroduced. When everybody has this, hey, it says replenish the earth. Hey, that means there were people here already. So it says reintroduced. That means they were already introduced to the soil. All right. In modern day Mexico, from where they radiated through the America. Okay, so they have some some sort of home that is coming out of what Central America, and they radiate to the other areas. Wild horses as native North American wildlife. All right, so prehistoric horses of North America. So prehistoric just means before history. So if there is history written, and it has to do with the aboriginal people that history is ignored when 
1493, when a European comes and starts uh, chronolizing his travels, that is when what we call white man's history is written for over here. They will tell you if, if, if they found something that they believe from 1300, it is pre-Columbus. That is prehistoric. This has to do with where the so-called European has been and overthrown the people that are from that area for the resources. Got to understand what is going on in reality. They say in the Bible that all kinds of people were having chariots. If you've got if you've got chariots, then you have horses to drive your chariots, right? So you can't sit there and say there's chariots found in North America, but they weren't drawn by horses. There were no, you, see, you see how that really wouldn't work? Oh, it's ox-driven chariots. Can you imagine a war with oxes driving the chariots? That's one long fucking war. Get down there so I can strike at thee. Yeah! That's, that's going to take a while. That's going to take a while. So, Horses and chariots of ancient America. Wow, that's crazy. All these things the European told us. You're just nigger slaves from Africa. When a great deal of percentage uh, uh, of us were right here on all the land. How can you prove that? How can you say things like hard evidence? You understand what the word evidence means. Hard proof. Hard facts. Hard evidence of ancient American horses. No, no, no. The Europeans said there were no fucking horses over here. But here are other Europeans that went out with a fucking shovel and found horse bones. So do I believe the European that's got the pitchfork poking at me, or do I believe the European with the shovel digging up stuff and saying, look, look what I just found. Hmm. Unfortunately, there's no aboriginals out there digging. There's no African-Americans out there digging. There's no Negroes out there digging. There's not even Orientals out there digging. There's not even Mexicans. So I have to go with who brought forth the evidence. So playing this, oh, that's a white man's book. Oh, that's a white man's document. Oh, that's just, that's not going to get anywhere. That's not going to get us anywhere. Oh, oh, white men found that, so I don't believe it exists. Well, that's, that's fine. You have every right to believe whatever the fuck you want. The wheel in the sky. Oh, wheel in the ground. This has to do with the wheel in the ground in ancient America. That, that does support chariots, right? Now, here we go right back to what? Nephi. Mormonism. Book of Mormonism. Book of Mormon's fake. No, their spiritual belief that they're trying to make everybody believe is fake. No, what they found is real, you, you silly, silly person. Evidence of Romans in America. Do I need to put ancient Rome? Ancient Romans in America. Pre-Columbian trans-oceanic contact theories. Experts discover ancient Roman remains in America just after their belief in Christ. We're... we're where, where, their, where their fictitious being would have fell in the timeline. So when they say, oh, he, he, he lived during like 2,000 years ago at the time of zero, and that's so fucking stupid to say. Back at the time of zero. But there's stuff before that. Oh, that's called BC. Instead of putting negative one, negative 12,000, like we do in math, math is true. 
our, our chronological timelines a fucking lie. But it's okay. The ancient Romans landed in America. Hey, if ancient Romans landed in America and they found people there, does that mean ancient Romans found America? Or does that mean the people that were living there found America and established America? It as a dwelling space and then the Romans came like the Europeans and tried to overthrow but those people put the Romans in their place but the, the white man loved black Rome so much he went and named everything after fucking Rome didn't he Roman kings American highways how did Rome roads influence us today Roman road names. How many people live in Georgia and you see uh, Augustus Highway? The, the Augustus Highway. Let's type in Augustus Highway. August. 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 Us. Look, the fucking thing is listening to me. I said August. It said us. Right? August. Us. Highway. Oh, don't act like you don't know what the fuck I'm you know, going to type. Right? Trying to beat the computer. Impossible, right? Let's say Virginia. Virginia. You see, it's... Oh, Virginia Beach. That's even better, right? So U.S. Route 460 in Virginia. Right? 17... Trail, it's, it's from a trail that dated back from the 17th century that led from Augusta County, Virginia to Roanoke, Virginia. Here's inter Interstate 64. Now, 460, drop the, back, drop the zero and then write it backwards. Witchcraft, Interstate 64. I-80 run and I-64 I am six, four, run together in Augusta County. Interstate 264, this interstate goes from 64 to 64, right? 264, a bypass route serving the Virginia Beach Oceanfront downtown Norfolk. Military highway! Wow! You're telling me they're giving they're gonna give a Roman king's name to a highway that's really military highway. You've been overthrown. Come on, can't you see it for what it's worth? I can't. And when I shared, some people, whatever they've been poisoned with, comes up. It shows itself. List of highways in Virginia, Interstate 264. Well, Augusta Military Academy. Wow. Did you know that they had a Roman military academy here? Hey. That don't say George Bush Military Academy, does it? It might as well say Julius fucking Caesar Academy, except for Augusta is not very familiar to the aboriginals here. You are taught about Caesar and what a Caesar means. To unite all these things, you have to be slayed for uniting them. Et tu, Brute? Carpe diem sees the motherfucking day. Now, when you understand you've been overthrown by Romans and they set their fucking flags and markers everywhere, that's the importance of the Roman flag. It's time to ask the big five. How, who, why, when, where, what? That was six, right? I mean, you get what I'm saying. Okay. So when I misspell, when I say laminate, like minute, lamin, lamin, laminite, I get in 1971. Church Magazine article refers to lamanites as consisting of the Indians of all the Americas as well as the islands of the Pacific, existence of the Lamanite nation is received, has received 
absolutely no support within mainstream science. Well, to say that the people of the Americas or who people the Americas are the Israelites of the Bible, the Ten Tribes, that would be very dangerous. Very dangerous. Now, when we go into La Man, now this was La Min, and I mispronounced it. You see, there's a correction. You see, it's the same La Man, and it's this is La Man. Now, this one, when I spell it correctly, it says. And you get another picture of Roman fucking soldiers versus Indians, right? Cowboys and Indians. <clears throat> Lamanites are one of the competing civilizations in the Book of Mormon. A sacred text of the Latter-day Saint movement published in 1830 by its founder, treasure hunter Joseph Smith. That purports to be an ancient history of God's dealings with the people in the Western Hemisphere. Now, we'll go further into this. And it starts... Lamanites are one of the competing civilizations in the Book of Mormon, a sacred text of the Latter-day Saint movement, published in 1830 by its founder, Joseph Smith, that purports to be an ancient history of God's dealings with people in the Western Hemisphere. In the Book of the Mormons, Book of Mormon's narrative, the Lamanites begin as wicked rivals to the more righteous neophytes. Now, if you understand what is being said from the video where I showed you the cartoon, listen very carefully. The neophytes wanted religious freedom So they separated from the Lamanites. That is going to be the basis of it all. When you take in consideration that this is the promised land, and you hear this story, the Neophytes are supposed to be these great people, but their brother, the Lamanites, outlived them. So, you'll have to understand that religious freedom means the freedom to worship whoever you will. So, with that being said, it's Roman images being shown for neophytes who wanted to worship whatever they wanted. In the end, the neophytes are wiped out. And I want you to remember this. <clears throat> now, this states, but when the neophyte civilization became decadent, it lost divine favor when they got what they wanted. When they got the ability to worship anything they wanted, they lost divine favor and was destroyed by the Lamanites, the turtle and the hair. In this story, the hair wanted something different, and it was destroyed by what? The turtle brothers, the turtle cousins. Mormons have historically associated, associated Lamanites with present day Native American cultures. But there is no scientific nor archaeological evidence that this is the case, nor indeed that a Lamanite nation ever existed. Now, remember, you are Afro-Asian, you are marginalized. They have put people in your place. You are the Aboriginal here. 
you warred with the Romans, you defeated them, and Europeans came, you fell. Many European books say that you are the Aboriginal, which I will show you at the end of this. There's no way that they want to admit what they called Indians in the past. They do not want to admit that this is their land. The Mormons have what you call now a kingdom. They have, they have modern day palaces that they call churches. They have modern day castles that you call churches. All built off the riches taken from these individual tribes that most of your family members were part of. They keep telling you in these smaller books, the percentage of real Africans that came here is very, very small. Now, remember, they're hiding your identity when they say Mormons have associated Lamanites with present day natives. Now, remember, the Europeans call their Native Americans in court cases. In court cases, on record, they call them Asians. And this is why there is no scientific or archaeological evidence to prove that the Native Americans who are Asians are prehistoric to these areas. But you, being the dark-skinned Aboriginal, all the European writers that came previously, before white supremacy, was built up. They all previously wrote that you are the Aboriginal. It's very easy to go here and say, here's our Noldus Montanus showing you what Montezuma looked like. If you sit there and say, show me Montezuma, Montezuma, and you say, show me an image, and they show you this white man, or they show you this Spanish dude, who's the, uh, this is the Robinson Library. Why does someone that lived at the time named Arnoldus Montanus draw this black man with feathers as the king of the huh? Aztec? Hmm? Why? Here it is in color, where his name is Montezuma. Rex. Williams, Williams before there's a W, right? Or or does this name name graduate into Williams? Rex Williams, U L L I M E S or A S. Native Americans. Native Americans, do you see the Afro Arnoldus Montanian, uh, Montanus Indians? See these black, different races, same book, the black Indians that they want to hide from you. I don't care if it's different races, I'm trying to show you dark-skinned Indians. You can always go to the Casta, the caste system of America, or the Casta, the caste system of Central America, and you'll find the same thing. This is what the Aboriginal kings look like. This is where 
322 came from. Remember, the white man didn't have any of this stuff. He took your witchcraft, which the Lord wanted him to. There's your eight-pointed star displayed with arrows. There's your skull and crossbones on the background. N New Galician. Cortez in the Americas, even though this isn't blown up, you can see the white European and you can see the dark-skinned Indian. West Navajo, and then here's Hoppy Land, right? Now remember, in Ohio and in Indiana, you have the Hopewell Indians, and then you have the Hoppy down here. It's going to be the same fucking blood, just a different name. Here you go with Afros. Here's Florida. Brown skin Indian. I don't care that it's drawn in black and white. If they wanted to draw you white Indians, they wouldn't have drawn the stripes through his skin. You've been lied to. It's about stealing your fucking land. This Jesus that's supposed to save your soul. You're told from the dumb diverses, 1452. Steal their fucking land because they're an enemy of Christ. If, if Christ is supposed to save your fucking soul, Pope stole your land because you ain't believe in this Christ that you should have knew about because it's from your bloodline, right? Not unless they made something up and said it was from you. They say they make shit about you all the time and say it's from you. They're evil. They, they steal from us. They break our cities. Your city that's on my land? I stole from... I stole 20 bucks from your wallet when you stole everything from me. You stole my inheritance. These Europeans are insane. We grant you the kings of Spain and Portugal by these fucking documents with our Paul. Apostolic authority means we trick the world. We trick the world with the words of Paul. We trick the world with the words of Paul. We trick the world with the words of Josephus. We trick the world thanks to the King Vespasian. We trick the world. There's a book in the New Testament to Vespasian's fucking son, Titus. The man that brought down Jerusalem. Don't you fucking get it? Titus destroyed Jerusalem as a thank you gift. There's a fucking book to Titus from Josephus. I mean, Paul. I mean, Arius Piso. We go right back down these fucking roads. Jesus is really Mandobel Zeus, who was killed fighting side by side with James. That's what fucking Josephus says. Who is Paul? Who is Arius Piso? If you don't understand what I'm saying, that's because you're new to all this. You're down here on the pyramid of knowledge, and as you keep climbing, you'll get to the peak of that pyramid that you're on, and you'll see all these other pyramids, and you'll start to learn all these other things. The person in the New Testament that you call Paul that promotes Jesus is also Vespasian's adopted Hebrew son named, Vesp named, named um, Josephus. He's also Arius Piso. The real family is not Paul family. It's not the Josephus family. Paul is a European name. Josephus starts with a J. It can't be a Hebrew name. The only name that's real from the time that these books were written is Arius Piso. The only family besides Vespasian that you can find that exists is the Piso family. The only adoption that, uh, adoption that actually took place between two adults 
and one was a king, was Vespasian and his son Titus, Vespasian the king at the time, accepting Arius Piso and the Piso family into their family and uniting two powerful families. There is no record of Paul joining anybody's family. There is no record of Josephus, period, besides Josephus records. But when you find who is Josephus, there's nobody that exists named Josephus. And the only person that's at all these places that Josephus just happens to be at is Arius Piso, a military commander that used to be for the Israelites until the Israelites were overthrown by the Romans. Then this Israelite, Arius Piso, joined the Romans through an adoptive act. And this is what you... This is where you get your biblical Paul. Paul, the one that says, if you read Jesus' writings, this thing called Jesus never says, worship me. It's always Paul saying, worship Jesus, not the creator. This Jesus writing, mono Baal Zeus, he constantly says, I'm doing this stuff for the creator. Mono Baal Zeus says the same verbal, uh, uh, what do you call these things? Uh, 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 metaphors. The, the, the metaphors Jesus makes are exactly the same as fucking, not word for word, but meaning for meaning, exactly the same as Mono Bales who says. Mono Bales who says, my father stored money in a vault above ground. I shall store my wealth below ground. No, wait, wait, I said that backwards. He said his dad put his, his money in a vault underground, you know, and that is to represent hell. And then he says he's going to put his precious things above uh, ground, as, it, as in the state of heaven. <clears throat> if you just type in Mono Bale Zeus and start reading about me, Mono Bale Zeus, and then you do your own comparison between Mono Bale Zeus and Jesus, you do not need me to sit in here and tell you oh, those two compare all you knew all you need is me to tell you that mono bail zeus existed just like arius piso aka josephus told you mono bail zeus existed he even told you when he died all right so with our apostolic authority our piso authority full and free permission to invade the americas search out the americas capture who are you capturing? Who are you searching out? And subjugate. You are subjugated right fucking now. Your education has been twisted, so you think you're just some dumb slave. Uh, I don't think you understand Darth Vader to invade someone else's fatherland. I don't think you know what these words, these simple fucking words mean. Feel free to look them up. The Saracens, right? And the pagans. Let's if 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 the Pope's the true pagan. Synchronicity. Taking pieces of every religion and combining them into an authority. If the Pope's the true pagan, then who is he calling pagans here? He's calling pagans the people he's going to take power from. Who's he going to take power from? All you got to do is go to Ephesians chapter 2. You see, I verbally said it and it came on fucking screen. And I think it's 13. We'll just do chapter 2 and we'll go to Bible Gateway and we'll scroll down. What did it say right there? It said what? Made al alive in Christ. This, this don't have nothing to do with that. Watch this. You go down here, and it says that what? Listen to this. Therefore, remember that ye being in past time, meaning before this moment, 
in the Gentiles in the flesh who were uncircumcised, who were called uncircumcised. So you know how black people mock everybody? You mock them when you visited these places, when you were sent out on your judge uh, wandering to go teach people, right? Torah no maki, right? You call these people uncircumcised by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, which is made by hands. That means you did not have a spiritual doctor split your manhood to show your head. <laughs> now, when you think of a hood, a hoodie, and you think of an uncircumcised penis versus a circumcised penis, you see the witch moves with the hood on. The witch does her work with the hood on. The wizard does their work with the hood on. The priest, the minister, not these things you see in these churches. The priest, the, the, what you were taught a monk was. The priest that is traveling to someone's land. He is circumcised. He knows how to perform circumcision. That at that time, ye were without Christ. Do you understand that? They're still in Europe, about to come to the Americas and take everything you fucking have. Someone told them about this Christ thing, but it wasn't Israelites. Listen, ye were without Christ, being aliens. What's another word for aliens? Foreigners, strangers. From the commonwealth of Israel. Now, you're Israel. You're over here playing Indian. You've got the covenant. You've got all this stuff. They are on the other side of, of the fucking water, and they've never heard of any of this until briefly when Paul comes, right? Paul's Vespasian's new, 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 new stepson, right? And you are going to teach my warriors this and prepare them for what? Transversing the sea. Where was Vespasian prior to coming back? Nero controlled the Israelites, and when the Israelites started burning cities, Vespasian came from Gaul. Galatians, Book of Galatia, came from Gaul, and when he saw what happened and Nero lost control, he stabbed Nero in the fucking neck. Now, there's a big, long-winded story to say Nero killed himself, but who commits suicide? He didn't slit his neck. He stabbed himself in the, in the neck. Nobody takes a fucking Roman sword knife and fucking plunge. In fact, Romans killed people, right, by plunging it downward at this angle. Just another way to show you're not going to take a sword up high and kill yourself like that. The only people that in, in the world that respect uh Self-punishment like that are the Orientals that, that deal with those, uh, the, the, the Japanese. They have that fucking, that small dagger just for that. Not Romans. So all I'm saying is, look at before I showed you. Here's what they say about horses. Here's what the grave says about horses. If I dig in the fucking grave and I find all these horses, then the guy saying, no horses here, is fucking lying. If I dig in the grave and I find all these elephants, the guy saying, no elephants here, is fucking lying. If I dig in the grave and I find a bunch of Roman swords, Roman weapons, Roman ships, then the guy saying, no Romans here, is fucking lying. If Rome came here, they came here for something or someone. Ephesians is the fucking starter gun when you find swords and shit like that that's failure one when you find fucking chariots and shit like that's failure two and when you find the records of columbus that's success one when you find records of cortez that's success two they finally overthrew us it took them hundreds of years they finally took 
everything from us. With us out of the way, they were able to take all the other nations of the world. At that time, Ephesians, Corinthians, Galatians being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers, foreigners from the covenants of promise. This dude <clears throat> is telling you there's more than one covenant. And you don't fucking get it. It's right there in Ephesians. He pluralized the word covenant and he fucked up. At that point in time, there should have only been one covenant. And the knowledge that in the last days from Isaiah, from Ezekiel, from Jeremiah, that there would be the signing of a second covenant. That means he knows if he stays there with all his people, those covenants would be on the other side in the Americas being signed, one, in the beginning of time, two, in the end of time, and they would have no part. They would just stay uh, uncircumcised heathens. That's why in America, they give you the option of circumcision. Because they know they got the children of Israel. They know if they want part of the covenant with their fake Christian and tactics and tactics, that they have to look the part. They can't grow afros, but they can cut their penis. What was the sign between God and man of the covenant? What was man's sign to God that he took the covenant? circumcision gotta understand what's going on strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope not what is no hope we got no hope of taking that hill that means you don't got no fucking chance having no hope and without God in the world how can these people be without God and be without Jesus and be without this covenant, be on the other side of the fucking ocean, yet come here and say they brought all these things that they didn't have? Are you that fucking stupid that you don't understand? They came with nothing but death. They heard your beliefs through fucking tales. And they brought those tails and sword and gunpowder here. Don't you see? Rome didn't have gunpowder. They had catapult. And catapult was not strong enough to take it from us. We are the king of the hill until they pushed us off. Now they keep showing you this hillbilly shit, king of the hill. But now, with Jesus on our side, right, with Christ Jesus, remember who Christ is. Christ is a creation of man. How can I prove that? I will show you the first Christ. His name is Sir Rape. Is Christus. Christus is any form of Christ. Just because you don't want to study, that's not my fault. Jesus, Serapis, Crust, this horse. Now, when you start to see that all these things have the same birth on the 25th, Savior of Man, all those fucking titles, don't you understand? They are pagan titles attributed to a pagan worship of what? Tammuz, the son of God, the son of Nimrod. Remember, Nimrod tried to kill Abraham. Abraham was in the furnace. Abraham survived the furnace, and Nimrod was so astonished, he said, What is your God? I shall take him up as my own, with my other 50 gods. And then, what? Nimrod built an altar to God in the house of his gods. And then Abraham left and was like, I don't want any part of any of this. And then God blessed Abraham. And then your inheritance was starting to be built. All these pagans knew about Haya. 
They, they called him the creator of the cosmos. Hmm. If everything starts with the cosmos and then comes down as above, so below, right? Then they just called him the creator, period. I got, I got people that have been arguing against Haya's name. He's a Babylonian deity. No, the white man wrote that he's a Babylonian deity. All that means is in Babylon, they knew his mother name. What's my name? My holy name, right? But you, oh, no. God's name is only going to be known to us in modern times. All over time, they're not going to know the creator's real name. You're drunk. Think how backwards people are. I want to accept the white man's words for this. I don't want to accept the white man's words. When the white man says, this can't be, you're like, yeah. Yeah. When the white man says, this is, you're like, no. 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 But you're so particular, too. White man says, Yahweh is God. You're like, thank you, white man. Thank you. Thank you. You turn around and, oh, hell yeah, you don't even go to a goddamn dictionary. You just start kissing his ass, kissing his testicles, kissing everything around his hip area. You did so good to us. Think of all these people that say, well, oh, I'm not going to do it in English or blah, 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 but they don't go and study Hebrew. All they're just doing is say, I only know English, so I'm not going to do it. That's what they're saying. It's easy to type some shit. All you got to do is have a bad taste in your mouth. That's all you got to do. Have a bad taste. It's easy to type some shit. All you got to do is have a good feeling. See, what's hard is typing when you write in the middle of that. When you feel good, it's good. When you feel bad, you still got that energy. It's about energy, right? And right in the middle. That's where all, all that fucking wide gray area is. That's why you don't like what they're doing, but you never wrote them about anything. Even at the time when people took pen to paper and wrote, I wrote fucking ABC. I do not like the fucking TV show that you displayed. And, and, and it had this in it. And people write TV stations all the fucking time. People write pastors. All, I do not like how you do all this money, money, money talk. This Bible says mammon's evil. Why do you do this? You're an evil preacher. How many people wrote any preacher? Yeah, you got that spike of hate. Ooh, that good, good energy. Mm, that's that good, good. And you start fucking ignorantly typing. Cats with machine guns. Oh, fuck, my heart's warm. Oh, that burst of energy. And you start typing. You're the sad display. Even this Jesus said... Fuck you if you're lukewarm. Right there in the middle. You, you'd be fucked up if Jesus was James, wouldn't it? It would be real fucked up if Jesus was just James. All the things that they did to James, they threw his ass off a second story building and clubbed his ass to death. And this motherfucker got, got up with a busted head and started walking away when they left him. He won't even read the words of Josephus to even find out what any of these prophets, what any of these leaders had to do for our people. Half of you don't even fucking know that Judas Maccabees changed the law so that we're supposed to be armed on the Sabbath. Most of you believe the European when they say that the Sabbath is done away with. It's not me. It's you. In fact, 
I've suddenly lost the urge to fucking continue. What is this for? Every time I, I watched 1,000 broadcasts, I had 700 something videos before. I think it was fucking 200 videos now. I don't even know what video I'm at now. I, I've watched 300 videos. And what has changed in your fucking life? Nothing. Nothing. If you like to taste the lemonade and you have lemons at home and sugar, if you're not going to make that fucking drink, what the fuck it good is your taste bud? What good is it that you like this or you like that? It doesn't matter. You're not going to do anything. You're not going to change. Are you waiting for a fucking imaginary fucking gun to be the starting gun? It's not going to change anything. When the starting gun goes off, you're going to say, okay, I'm going to go get ready. This is, this was your time to get ready. You're poisoned. I'm poisoned. Are you willing to change? This is a great time for a mirror. This is this is a wonderful time for a mirror, isn't it? You've got to come to terms with yourself. You've got to ask yourself. Mirror, mirror, in my hand. If I stab Lucifer in his plan, does it fall to pieces? So with a mirror next to you and you're staring in your own beautiful eyes and you say to yourself can I change for the better can I change for the law can I change for something bigger than me Can I change for the people? Can I change for him? Can you change for each other? Can you change for your creator? 